Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me once again for 10 Times Better. 10 Times Better is our series uh, focused on men, but also quite informative to the ladies uh, so that they can uh, better understand uh, the principal men in their lives, uh, encourage them in a godly direction, uh, understand a little bit more about their thinking and, and why they do what they do. Um, now this is really different, 10 times better is a focus on men versus daddy talk, which you know some of you have already seen, which really focuses on what a woman needs to know about a man from a man's point of view. Uh, sometimes the ladies will write in and say, you know, that men do this to us. It's not about um, uh, choosing sides. It's about informing the ladies. This is what daddy talk is about, informing the ladies of things maybe their dad should have told them about men. Uh, giving women a better understanding of their significant others, uh, husbands, boyfriends, fathers, brothers, cousins, all the males in their lives. Uh, that's that daddy talk. But 10 times better is focused basically upon what every man must know about himself and what every woman needs to know about the men in her life. Uh, 10 times better springs out of the book of Daniel where um, the Hebrew boys were found to be 10 times better than all the other wise, noted people, men in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, found in Daniel, Daniel chapter 1. So I'm going to talk to you today about, um, as we review a little bit, we're going to get further into 10 times better and talk to you about what a 10 times better man must do, must know, how he must respond and react in order to exhibit uh, the work God is doing in his life. So welcome once again to 10 times better. Let's pray. God, I thank you right now for this opportunity. I ask by the power of your spirit that you open our minds and our hearts one more time. Help us to understand, help us to receive, then help us to apply and become what you've promised us to be in your word. Thank you for every man that has joined us today. I thank you for every woman who has joined us. Now, Lord, let's have this conversation. You, us, the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. So last time we were together, we talked about how important it is for a man to live according to wisdom. And then we uh, really split a hair on the type of wisdom that you need to have. Life experiences gives you what I call life experience wisdom. Uh, when we ask God for more wisdom, we should not be asking him for more of ours, but we want more of his. So the distinction in wisdom is this, either man's wisdom, our wisdom based on our experience, or God's wisdom based upon his word. Now, we know that wisdom, according to the Bible, Proverbs, is a principal thing. That Wisdom is one of the keys to the kingdom. Now, this is important. So Jesus says, I give you keys. Wisdom is one of those keys. Now, when he says, I give you keys, I give you authority, I give you access, I give you, a, if you will, a way of doing things, a way of thinking, a way of responding, even a way of reacting. One from my experience, that wisdom from my experience, the other from God himself. So I've got to ask the question, when it comes to keys and it comes to your wisdom, uh, men, where were your keys cut? Were they cut in your experience so they dominate, your experience dominates your life, or were they cut in the kingdom of God through the word of God? Because when Jesus gives his disciple the keys, he gives them access, authority, and permission, power in a kingdom that is superior to the one that Peter understands. So these keys are to another dimension of understanding, another dimension of manhood, another dimension of humanity, another way of doing things. Now, this is really important for us. Now, when Jesus says, I give you keys to the kingdom, now, it's, it's, a, it's a little known, little talked about biblical principle, principle called location of sphere. Example, baptism versus baptism of water or baptism of spirit. Location of sphere lets you know, without any doubt, where the baptism is located or what type of baptism it is. 
So when we talk about baptism of water, we know it's bat water baptism. Baptism of spirit, we know it's spirit baptism. Versus if I just say baptism, we'll not be sure exactly what we're talking about. So Jesus comes along and says, I'm giving you keys, but these are keys to the kingdom location where the keys have authority. All right, watch where this works. So Jesus is not saying there aren't other keys to life. But he is saying there are keys that only he can give you. I give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. And because I'm giving you those keys, they will, they will unlock dimensions in heaven and on earth at the same time. Because the key that works in heaven that's given to us on earth, watch this, is not only designed to work in heaven, but it's designed to work in earth. So God's wisdom will work both with the, in, in divine things and in your workplace, in the neighborhood and in your families. This wisdom is a wisdom of God that allows us to carry one of the greatest keys that we could ever possess, and that is the key of wisdom. Now, when we look at Psalm chapter 16, I want to take a look at uh, verse 11, and that's where we're going to start our conversation today. Psalm 16, verse 11 says, Thou will show me the path of life. God will show me the path of life. Watch this. In your presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So, we've learned before, ten times better man must be a wise man. He must be a spirit-led man. He must be a God-seeking God man. He must be a man that trusts God. He must be wiser every day. He must develop patience. Watch what I said. He must develop patience or endurance. According to the Bible, patience only comes by way of experience. Watch this now. Not experience without God, experience with God. So I'm developing, if, if I can call it this, spiritual patience that will serve me in my life every day. But God develops it through trial, through testing. Tribulation worketh or produces patience. Watch how this works. Ten times better man has got to be a man of faith. Now, ladies, uh, what, what, when I tell you what he's got to be, these are characteristics that you want to cultivate in your sons, characteristics you want to encourage in your fathers. Uh, if you have a boyfriend, encourage these characteristics. A husband, encourage these characteristics in him. Okay? Because a lot of times... As young men, we don't have mentors which teach us this. They teach us how to fight. They teach us how to talk to women. They teach us how to work some of them. They teach us how to hustle some of them. But street wisdom and divine wisdom are entirely different. And a man must be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. So he must, even though he's governed by the Holy Spirit, he must know how to navigate life as it is presented to him. So, so this, this divinely gifted individual is not an individual that's naive about life because he has experience. But now he brings that experience, submits that experience to the experience of God. So God's wisdom becomes superior than my experiential wisdom. And all of a sudden, I become a better man. Now watch how this works. We talked about the fact that a, a 10 times better man is a promotable individual. Someone that God can use in the marketplace, in an occupation, in a business, in the kingdom, he's promotable. Someone God can depend upon. Someone, watch this, that God trusts. Now, this 10 times better man has to become a familiar. And I want to be careful about the word I'm about to use, comfortable in the presence of God. Because once a ten times better man becomes aware or discerns or starts to be sensitive to the presence of God, watch what the Bible says. He will show me, watch this, the path of life. This is really important. Not a path, the path. In other words, my brother, my sister, we spend our lives searching for the right path. When God says, I will show you the path of life. This is really important. 
I don't know about you, but many times in my younger years, I spent a lot of time searching for the right destiny, the right path, searching for purpose. I did it when I was running the street. I did it as I pursued relationships. I did it as I pursued careers, businesses. I did it as, as I pursued what we called fun back in the day, clubbing, doing our thing. I realize now looking back that what I was doing was trying to find a path. And what would happen was I would see other paths that I admired and try to adopt those paths for my own. But the reality was, it wasn't the path that God has chosen for me. Well, Bishop, how do I find this thing? Now, listen to me very closely. Everything ever created, everything ever created, everything absolutely ever created was designed to reveal its genius in a specific environment. Everything created, designed to reveal its genius, its purpose, its authority in every situation. Watch this now. Fish, simple, fish in the ocean, birds in the sky. You take a fish, take him out of his element, he soon dies. You take a bird out of the sky, plunge him into the ocean, he soon dies. But a fish in water, every aspect, every percentile, of his creative genius is revealed. Birds in the air, lions in the jungle, men and women in the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, watch this now, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So there are other ways, but when you find him, you find the way. There are other truths, but if you find him, you find the truth. There are certainly other lives we can live and some of us have lived. Jesus comes along and says, mm, I am the life. This is amazing to me. So, there is distinctly a way that seems right to us. But God says in Psalm 16, He will show me the path of life. And once I begin to find that path, I cannot find that path without a maturing relationship with the presence of God. I've got to become more familiar with him. Well, how do I do that? It's not by feeling alone. The more word I learn about the Lord, the more comfortable I am in the relationship, not from a, um, a dismissive kind of comfortable, not a common comfortableness. But the more comfortable and the more assured I am, the more trusting I am, the more believing I am as I walk with God. In thy presence, watch this, is fullness of joy. A mature joy. Joy fundamentally is the strength of God given to you and I. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is not just frivolity or an upbeat lifestyle, joy is the actual strength of God working in your life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is equal to strength. So God's strength, the joy of the Lord, is my strength. And he says, he says I'll position myself, I'll be at his right hand. That right hand, the hand of power, the hand of protection, the hand of deliverance. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now watch this. So, so not just pleasures in the sense of feel good, but God gets pleasure when he is able to exercise his will in our lives. So the 10 times better man is a man that understands the presence of God because he's learned more about God and the word of God. 10 times better man is a man that allows God to show him the path. Watch this. And then discover the steps that have been ordered for him by the Lord. It is, a, it is a man who likes to think consciously, I want to stay on the right hand of God. What does that mean? The righteous hand of God. What does that mean? I want to stay in position for God to get his will done in my life. Every promise, thank you, Lord. I feel your confirmation. In spite of this, I feel your confirmation, Lord. Thank you. 
I'm, I'm always so amazed how the Lord works with us. And in the midst of teaching you, I'll get the confirmation that you are receiving something that's changing your life. Because watch this. A good chef eats his own food, tastes his own food before he serves it to someone else. So I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to you and I'm talking to me at the same time. God is talking to all of us. So I want to stay at his right hand. The 10 times better man seeks the right hand of God. That means for you and I today for this conversation seeks to stay in a position where the will of God can be done in his life. Second thing I want to talk to you about today, a 10 times better man, you've got to be a man that studies the word of God. Go to Psalm 119. I know, I know you thought you knew where I was going, but I'm going to Psalm 119. And let's take a look over here at something you may have not considered before. Uh, Psalm 119 and take a look at verse, uh, yeah, 105. Psalm 119, 105. Watch what happens here. Watch this. Now, you've seen this before. Thy word, your word, Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So I've got to be an individual that understands the presence of God, who becomes more and more familiar with the presence of God, not in a negative way, in a positive way. I must become Enoch-like that I walk with God consistently. And that that walk becomes a testimony of faith in my life. That the presence of God, uh, I'm aware of it 100% of the day. That I'm moving only if he moves with me. That I understand that his presence brings me fullness of joy. That in his presence, I'll learn the path of life. That in his presence, I'll get so comfortable in it that I want to stay in it. So his will can be done in my life. Then he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light to my pathway. Now, you got to understand what this looks like. Uh, it is written that there, there was a lamp in which you put a candle. And the candle had one lens to shoot light for, straight out and another smaller lens to shoot light down. So, it would light the path in front of you and light the immediate ground that you were about to step upon. So, it would light up the path and put light before every step. Oh, this is beautiful. And it says, what will do this for me? Thy word is a lamp. Familiarity with the word of God. Told you a man, a 10 times better man has to be a man that studies God's word. A lamp unto my feet. It'll show me where to put the next foot step. The next step, what I want to do. Strategically think it. The next step. God, which way do you want me to go? Now, brothers, I'm not telling you to get spooky. You know, you walk into the Walmart, you don't have to stand there in the middle of the floor and ask God which way you want me to go. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about exercising wisdom in your life to a point where you are being led and guided by the word of God with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Light your path so you have vision. Light your feet so you make progress in safety and the will of God. So this 10 times better man must live in the presence of God, be aware of it, must study his word. Last thing for today, he must be a man of faith. Go to Mark 11. Mark 11. Must be a man of faith. Mark 11, 24. And watch how this works. 24 says, therefore, or I say unto you, Jesus is teaching us now. What things soever you desire, stay close to this, what things soever you desire. Now, there's controversy about this verse that I don't understand. One of the things that have helped me in my life, I have, I believe with all my heart, if God, Christ, and the Holy Ghost wrote this book, if he didn't want me to have it, why would he put it in here? So let's just get all the arguments out of the way. If all things are possible, if we believe, if nothing is impossible, if I believe, if it is being unto me according to my faith, if the merry testimony of 
be it unto me according to thy word, has any gravity at all, has any merit at all, then you and I have to understand how important faith is to God. Faith, without it, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to him must believe that he is his existence and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now this is real important. So I've got to have faith for a blessing and for God's reward. Well, Bishop, what is the difference between God's reward and God's blessing? You remember that when Jesus was teaching again in the New Testament, in, in, in the Gospels, and he's talking about the fact that uh, seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The blessings are the things. Some of you are already there. The blessings are the things we pray for. The things we're concerned with. The things that God has promised us. But he says, the reward is me, God is saying. God is saying, I'm your great reward. So then, watch the full circle. He's the reward. His presence is guaranteed. Faith in his presence will cause things to happen. Watch this ten times better, man. We've got to be a man of faith. What things soever you desire, no doubt. Now that desire is the things that God would approve of. So I've got to sanctify my desires, brother. I've got to sanctify my desires and understand what sort of things you desire. Watch this. When you pray, there it is again. Got to be a praying man. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Very controversial, especially in the faith camp. Especially among Protestant churches, especially in Pentecostal churches, especially of those that don't believe this by faith, especially those who want to discount what Jesus said. And because they don't have the faith, put this in a category where it's heresy. Well, it's not heresy. Jesus teaches here what things soever you desire when you pray. Jesus ain't lying. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Talking about faith. Now, this is right behind the prayer of faith, which is verse 30, 22 and 23. The prayer of faith. Having the God kind of faith. Believing all things are possible. So faith is that empowerment God gives us to attach our desires to supernatural manifestation. So it attaches my desire to something real. Jesus says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. Now, I'm going to give you a little sh short thing right here, a little principle I want you to remember. When you pray, that's faith believing for a thing. While you're waiting, you have to have believing faith. So the petition is faith believing going out. When I'm waiting for my answer, I'm practicing consistently believing faith. Why do I say it like that? Faith to send the petition and faith to escort the answer into your life. It's very important because faith to pray is not nearly as strong as the faith to believe you receive. The Bible says, believe you receive them and ye shall have them. Right after the prayer of faith. So I've got to be a man who lives in the presence of God to be 10 times better. I've got to be a word studying man to be a 10 times better man. And I must be a man of faith. I really want to go further, but we're out of time. I want to thank you. And I look forward to talking to you once again about the 10 times better man. I'll see you real soon.